Well, hello, Digital DJ Tips family, and a very good day to you. It's Tuesday, and that means it must be Tuesday Tips Live with me, Phil Morse. And today we're talking about headphones. What do you think of these, eh? See this, Digital DJ Tips collars? You see what we did there, eh? My wife says they look like a child's toy, but I quite like them. Anyway, we're talking about headphones because sometimes you need to DJ in just your headphones. Sometimes you can't be using your speakers for whatever reason, even dinky little ones like this. Sometimes it is too much. Kids are asleep. Neighbours won't like it. It's three in the morning and you don't want to DJ on your speakers. But there are other times when you might have to DJ in just your headphones or you might want to as well. You could be on the road, you could be traveling, you could be in a hotel, you could be in an airport, you could be on a plane. You could be sat there on a Saturday afternoon in your house, everyone's watching the sport and cooking and doing normal stuff and you think, you know what, I just want to prepare that mix that I'm going to be doing on my live stream tomorrow. Do a quick recording of it. If you've got your computer, you could plug your headphones in and sit there with your computer on your laptop and on your lap and as long as you know a few shortcuts, you could do your whole set without even plugging in a controller or worrying about speakers or anything. Loads of reasons why it's a good idea to learn at least one of the methods to DJ with just your headphones. And of course, the big one is if you're playing in a club and the monitor speakers either blow or they're awful. So in other words, you're in a DJ booth, there's speakers here. The speakers out there are no good to you because they're miles away and they're pointing in a different direction. They're all echoey and time delays on them and so on. So you need your monitor speakers to work in the DJ booth. If they don't work or they're not very good, if you know how to DJ on headphones, you could just pop your headphones in and carry on as if nothing had happened. In fact, laid back Luke, our course tutor, that's the way he DJs. He wears buds in-ear monitors all the time and that's how he DJs. He never uses the monitors in any club. So lots of reasons to do this. So today we'll be talking about three ways to DJ in just your headphones. If you enjoy this, please do hit that share button. It's really important to us. If you're watching the replay, it's probably because you're not a follower or you're not a subscriber. So hit subscribe, hit follow, hit notify, and then you'll know about that. And if you're totally new to this, we're Digital DJ Tips, the people behind the book and the matching headphones, only the book, they're pioneer. Uh, and uh, you'll see this on Amazon. It's the bestseller on how to DJ over there on Amazon with the people behind that. We're also the people behind digitaldjtips.com and the 23 now DJ courses that we have out there. And twin number 23 is actually coming out literally in the next two days. It's called House Mixing Mastery. It's already been a massive hit with our private student group and now it's going public in two days. So do keep an eye open for that on the website all about how to mix house music. So that's who we, that's who we are. We're here to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. I'm Phil Morse, the founder of the company, and that lot over there are our awesome regulars who I can see already are pounding their keyboards to share on this topic and just to say hello. So just before we get going, I wanna get your questions and your thoughts on DJing and just your headphones, and then in just a couple of minutes, having got a few of those, we'll get started. So firstly, hello you people, hello. Uh, and there are lots and lots of you commenting already, which is awesome. Uh, DJ Lady Beats says, I love this segment, so I can learn to practice at work or on the road and not bother anyone. You got it, DJ Lady Beats. That's what this is all about, DJing in just your headphones. Hello to everyone who's just saying hello. Uh, so DJ Hog Smash says, hey, Phil, take your time on this one. I need to learn this. Okay, I will. Uh, so I always DJ my headphones, says Jeff. Uh, at gigs, headphones stay on sound better to me. Stay, st st headphones staying on sounds better to me. Yeah, you're like laid back Luke. You're in good company there, Jeff. Uh, so uh, let's. So uh, my usual bit of housekeeping to everyone asking questions which are not to do with today's topic. That's great. I'd love to answer them. The team will try underneath on Facebook and YouTube in the comments. But the best place to ask those questions is on a Thursday when we have Thursday Q and A in this very slot. So just hold that thought. Um, so yes, I agree with Jeff, whoever it is who keeps spamming their link in Facebook. We saw it once and we didn't ask for it. Stop. Um, so uh, Benedict likes to practice in headphones for late night work. That's true. Uh, so Digital DJ Tips team, can you ban the person who is spamming me comments, please? That'd be great. Uh, so um, Charlie's listening at work. Great. Good to have you here, Charlie, listening at work. Um, 
Uh, DJ Decane says, good call, Phil. Late night at home sessions. I really need this suggestion. I've got to keep friendly with the neighbours. Yeah, you know, this is a big one. This is a big, big one. Uh, so, uh, all right, before we go any further then, let's talk about the three ways that you can DJ uh, from your headphones without the speakers plugged in at all. We'll head back over here for me to show you. So, all right then. Way number one is on nearly all DJ equipment. So for instance, on this here, which is the Pioneer, uh, these controls here, let's try and zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. Right, so your headphone controls are about here. We all know the Q gain. It's, I meant the new mark, not the Pioneer. But we all know the Q gain. It's just the volume for the headphones. But the other one, Q mix, this is your friend. Because when you have this turned to the left onto Q, the buttons that you press to Q the channels will be what you hear. But when you have it turned onto the right, so that's these two buttons here, there's always buttons not by the channels to, to play that channel through your headphones, right? When you have it turned to the right, you'll hear what the rest of the crowd are hearing. And in the middle, you'll hear both. So this is the key to doing this with just your headphones. Because normally when you're DJing, normally when you're DJing, you have your headphones kind of plugged in like this, right? One ear on, one ear off. This ear is listening to the monitor speakers or your speakers at home. And this ear is listening to, is plugged in, and is listening to whatever you have the Q button pressed on on your controller. And you have this sound stage. Track that's coming, track that the crowd can hear. And you're in the middle getting it ready. And when it all sounds good, you mix it in so the crowd can hear the track you're preparing. If you use that button, that knob rather, the Q mix knob, you can approximate that in just your headphones. You have your headphones on, you leave them on, you never take them off, you turn it to right to master and you're hearing what the crowd is hearing, even if it's just recording a mix in your bedroom. And turn it to the left and you hear whatever you've got the Q button pressed on. You get that ready. When you've got the track ready, you turn it about halfway and you mix it in. So now you can hear both tracks in your headphones, but only you until you mix the cross fader or the main fader up and then you can hear the other track uh, going live. It's reasonably intuitive. Different people have different ways of using that function, but there is a better way. Now, the good thing about that function is it's on nearly every controller. It's on cheap controllers like this. Some controllers don't have it. The Pioneer DDJ SB3, for instance, doesn't have it. It does let you monitor either the left hand deck, the right hand deck, or the master. It's got switches for that, but it doesn't let you have that blend between them which is not as good as having that knob. But nearly all DJ gear has that knob on it. But if you're lucky, if you've got a higher end DJ controller or something like this, the Pioneer, 1000, uh, the Pioneer 900, Nexus 900, or of course, if you're DJing in a club, they're gonna have gear like this, then there's another option. And this is the one that you really ought to get used to using. And it's this button here. It's called the mono split button. Now this does a very clever thing. Your headphones are plugged in. You turn it to stereo, your headphones are gonna hear whatever you send down them in the left and the right, in the blue and the pink. So if I press the Q button here, I will hear this channel as long as the control we've just talked about, the Q master is set to Q. And that's it, I'll hear that channel. If I mix the Q master, halfway, I'll hear them both, and I mix it all the way, I'll hear just the master, just like we were just looking at on the DJ controller. But if I press mono split, this is gonna behave differently. It's now gonna send any channel that I press the Q button on into one earpiece and the master into the other earpiece. They'll both be mono, but this will always be playing the master output. And this will always be playing what you press the Q button on. Now, if you can get your head around the fact that you're gonna be having the master volume in one ear, or all times, what the crowd can hear, and the other ear can only hear what you're preparing, then you're done. Then you can always prepare tracks in this ear and start to mix them in and switch over to this ear and listen to the result. 
especially if you turn the cue button off once you've got it ready. So now this ear is the only ear you're gonna be listening to and that's gonna be having what the crowd, if you like, are hearing. It does take a bit of getting used to, but you can get used to it. And like I say, a lot of, well, some big name DJs, that's how they DJ. And some of our crowd DJ like that as well, including laid back Luke, he DJs like that. So that way you can always DJ uh, without a speaker and queue up the forthcoming track. You can either use the cue master knob, or if you're lucky enough to have a mono split, you can use the mono split button. However, there is another way. And this way is a little bit different. And this has got a certain specific use case. So let's illustrate this by showing you my uh, computer. So this is my Serato. Now I have this set up with this little bit here. You see, I'm moving the crossfader left to right. I'm doing that by grabbing it with my mouse. And in fact, on the Serato, there is something called Serato Play, which lets you DJ with just the laptop. No controller required. Most DJ software lets you do that anyway. Tractor does it, DJ does it, but they've all got this uh, way of DJing with just the keyboard shortcuts and maybe the odd bit of mouse. In fact, you can move the crossfader with the cursor keys on that, that, that Serato Play. The reason that's good, and the reason I use that a lot, is if I'm preparing a set, say for, I did a live stream yesterday, I always prepare my sets in advance for live streams, and I like to do a recording of them, so I've got something clean without me gabbering on to put on Mixcloud afterwards. Same set, but just a clean, nice recording of it. So what I tend to do is plan my set on Serato, and I do this. So let's go back to the screen and I'll show you. So what I do is, if you look at the top corner of the screen, I'm gonna zoom in on it now for you. This bit up here, this is one of the tracks in my mix, and you see the cue points, the red, orange, blue, purple, and green cue points up there. They're cue points on the track that mark certain things. The red one marks my in point. Uh, the purple one's a mistake. Let's get rid of that. The red one marks my in point. The green one marks my out point. And the other ones mark when I want to do things in the track. There's another mistake, actually. Uh, so this is because I like to plan my mixes. You look back down into the library now, let's zoom down to that part. This is the actual mix that I played on Sunday and it's all been planned. These are the tracks in order in a playlist. And so what I do, and what a lot of DJs do when they're planning radio shows and when they're planning mixes like this is put the tracks in an order and put cue points on saying mix in here, mix out here, fade out here. So for instance, some of those like, hieroglyphics I had were about the EQs and the, the key settings and stuff. When you've done that, you can effectively play the whole mix without ever putting your headphones on because it's all been planned. You know when you're going to be hitting play. You know when you're, you know how to set your EQs. You know whether the key is up one or down one or whatever. And you're just going through the motions to record the mix. So then you don't need your headphones to monitor the other track at all. You just need to be able to hear the master output. So then you just take your headphones, put them on, plug them into the headphones output on your laptop, sit in the corner while everyone else is doing their thing and you run through your mix, no need to listen to the other track at all. And indeed, when you see quick mixers, DJs who appear to not even have headphones but they're doing flashy stuff, they're not cheating. They've just prepared that mix so damn well that they don't need headphones anymore. They've got cue points marked up, they know the tracks are all in the right order and they've either practiced enough or they've even got notes against their cue points as I have there in Serato to remind them what happens when. And it's a different way of mixing, but it's a certainly a very good way of doing mixtapes, of prepare, unless you're a scratch DJ, you know, because you're gonna want your gear there. But just on your laptop, just with your headphones plugged into the headphones out and planning your mix with well-labeled cue points and all your tracks in order in a playlist, you can actually DJ for hours with just your headphones on, prepping, getting ready for sets, getting mixtapes ready without ever needing to listen to the track independently of the main output, in which case you can do it in just your headphones. You don't need speakers at all. So there's your three ways of doing this. There is a fourth way, which sounds batshit crazy, but I loved it. So thank you to the person over on our blog who shared this way with me. And what he did, or she, was take some in-ear monitors, like the earbuds you get with your phone, put one 
in one ear and plug it into the headphone socket. And then from the output at the back, and this is the clever bit, get an adapter that takes the two RCA cables, so the red and the white one at the back, and lets you plug your headphones into it. So an adapter that's kind of like two, head, two audio cables, and the other end is a headphone socket. Plug the headphones in, and then take a large pair of headphones, bigger than these, put them over the top of the in-ear monitor. So the in-ear monitor is now, yeah, is now your headphones, and the headphones are acting like the speakers all around you. And then uh, this person said, it's really cool because it's like having a, um, you can immediately tell the difference between the two, uh, and then just use your DJ gear like normal. And of course, the benefit of that is it works with all DJ gear, because all DJ gear has got a headphones output and a speaker's output. I really like that. I can't wait to give that a go and see what it feels like. I thought that was a great suggestion. So there's a fourth way, thanks to our awesome community. Right, so that's what I've got to say. Now let's see what you guys and girls have got to say about this topic, because it's time for comment cam. Uh, all right. Um, well, Ruben, welcome. Ruben says, my first time here. So that's cool. Uh, my DDJ 800 helps me so much to listen to my live music because it has a Q button for the master volume. What's up, Phil? Yeah, the Q, you know, we just saw that on the DDJ SB, didn't we? Uh, a little um, button that puts the master volume into your Q headphone settings. Uh, the next uh, comment on this is from Kevin. He says, I do an online radio and Facebook live. I only use headphones, no monitors at all. And I guess you could prepare mixes in the way I've been talking about as well, couldn't you? Jamie says, I've been DJing in headphones for years. Don't really want to wake anyone up super early in the morning. I love that. DJing super early in the morning. Best time to DJ. I've been DJing in headphones. For, oh, sorry. Uh, I've been sneaking you on at work. I only use headphones that don't have monitors. Right. Well, I like that. Um, Charlie says, I hate it when I miss your live, but I'm at work and I'm finally catching up with you. That's good, Charlie. I'm glad you're here. Since the days of terrible latency, I've DJed more and more in my headphones, also to not annoy the neighbours. You know, one of the truths about DJing with speakers is if the speakers are more than like 10 feet away from you, there's actually an audio delay. So it makes deep beat mixing very difficult. So even in pubs and bars, sometimes the speakers are too far away. You do need to use your headphones unless you've got a monitor speaker. So thank you for sharing that one, Mark. Don't do it loud, says Russell. I've damaged my ears as a result of doing uh, doing this with headphones. So it's a very good tip there. Uh, Sean, I have a neighbor who's a pain in the ass. So I'm used to DJing in headphones and it works fine for me. If you do DJ on headphones and you get used to it, I think you might lose the art of beat matching by sound. I don't think you will. Uh, a, B, I think it kind of comes, you know, like riding a bike, comes back to you instantly. Uh, but a good, uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, thought there. Uh, so many of you always using headphones because of late at night. Uh, Mixmaster G says, Phil, you took the gorgeous weather from Holland when you left. It wasn't that good when we were there last week. Mixmaster G, I was glad to get back. Um, Anthony says, split Q, yeah, that's what we're just looking at. It's called split Q sometimes or mono. Um, mono Q or headphones Q. Um, uh, Daniel, Daniel X says, I've been thinking of doing this just for my 5 a.m. breakfast sessions on Twitch. Well, there you go. Um, I do it to minimize the, I, I like using my headphones for DJ to minimize the chance of feedback in the booth. Uh, yeah, because if you're wearing a microphone or using a microphone, indeed, you know, when we record DJ sets, when I'm in teaching mode and I'm over here, and we've got DJ gear set up here and I'm rocking out saying, yeah, you know, this does that and this is how the filters, listen to how great those filters sound, aren't they amazing? The, the volume on the little speakers down here is so low because we don't want it to go back into the microphones and cause feedback or just degradate the sound quality. So yeah, you know, um, doing it so that you don't have to have the volume loud in the DJ booth if you're using a microphone is uh, another good way, good reason to do it in just the headphones. Loads of you saying you've got your headphones on right now. <laughs> That's good sneaking Tuesday tips live into your live. Um, when I mix for my sessions with YouTube, I use both headphones and monitors because when I get the headphones off, I like to have a good loud sound to dance to. Yeah, of course, if we can, we'd much rather do that, wouldn't we? Uh, we actually said the same thing over in the article on the website. You know, this is the article that, um, that prompted all of this. Let's get that zoomed in so you can see it a bit better. Uh, this is the article that prompted a bit of all of this. Uh, and I don't know why that's not zooming in properly. Anyway, you can see it there just about, can't you? Uh, and uh, we said that in there. There's some good comments in there as well, but all the comments on this are commenting on Facebook. There's lots and lots of people commenting on Facebook about this. So 
uh, on the original post of this. So if you want to go and get some more views on this, head over there. Lately, I've been mixing without headphones, only master out, super lazy mode. Not recommended when family and friends are around, but you can still be lazy. Just plug your master out into your, into your headphones, of course. When I DJ outside around New York City or on my roof, I cannot use a speaker, so I exclusively mix in the headphones. It's an essential skill to learn after beat matching, says Mike. I saw our pal um, Mojax doing a, a full live stream on the river up there in the northeast of England uh, with silence because he had it all in his headphones just the other week. Uh, so lots of people saying they've damaged their hearing doing this. So as with all things DJ, be careful with your hearing. You only get it once. Uh, I've just bought the new Mark NV, which has a split cue. How awesome, Jason. I forgot about that. That's cool. Uh, Sean says I've used monitors for years. Now doing every mix in the headphones and it's improved my mix quality. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, some cheap audio interfaces also have the blend option. I use the NI Audio 2 with algorithm DJ iOS. This can have master blended with Q. Thank you, Mixmaster G. Uh, that's a great thing to share there. Uh, split Q drive, drive me nuts. I need my audio in stereo, says Jamie. Jamie, I'm a bit like you, but you know, we're not everyone. Certainly worth getting used to. Uh, sort of a Beta headset style, like laid back Luke. Yeah, Luke just uses um, Beats earbuds, wide Beats earbuds. That's what he DJs with. You don't need the best gear in the world to be the best DJ. Uh, Mark, it's a travesty that Split Q isn't standard on all controllers. I agree with you, Mark. I stream my sets to Twitch and I don't even have actual speakers. I only use headphones, says it's Ruben. You know, a lot of people are using streaming late at night, early in the morning, middle of the night. And of course, we don't all have studios that we can get away with loud music in, do we? Uh, do people not press the Q button on both channels and then alternate each Q channel to hear the master volume? N no, not really. Uh, yeah, I guess you could. I don't think people do that though, Evan. It's just easier to use the knob. And sometimes there is a, Q, a master mix Q because of course you might have more than two channels playing to start with. Uh, and the, the Q button, is con the volume is controlled by the Q volume, whereas you've got volumes and EQs and stuff which could be affecting the master output that don't come down the headphones when you press Q. Um, uh, I've got, oh, there's some, yeah, there's some uh, comments here which are nothing to do with this topic. That's cool, people, but just save them for Thursday. We'll try and answer them on Thursday for you. Uh, just one or two more then. Uh, during the live stream, when we talk during the mix, is there a way to remove the microphone input to talking so I can put the mix on SoundCloud or MixCloud without the commentary? Is there a way to do that? Yes, there is. Um, go on, I'll give you this question that's a bit off topic because uh, we were just teaching it literally a few minutes ago. So on your DJ controller, if you plug in the microphone, generally that goes straight to the output. It doesn't go through the DJ controller mixer, certainly on most DJ controllers, most cheaper ones. So that gives you the chance to do something a bit sneaky. You can send the broadcast via the output of your DJ controller. On your DJ controller, plug in a audio interface like a mix, Evermix mix box or something, other end into your computer, DJ software, uh, broadcast software out to the world. That will pick up the music and also your microphone. That's what you do to start with. And then you just hit record on your DJ software and that will record just the music because your DJ software won't have that microphone input because most DJ software, the microphone doesn't go through the software. It just goes straight to the output of the controller. So if you hit record in your software, you should just get the music recorded in most systems. It's different in Traktor, but in most systems, that's how it works. Experiment. Uh, there are other ways, but that way should, should do you. I've got a Traktor Control S3 talking about Traktor. DJing just headphones is impossible due to the volume levels. Has anyone had the same issue? No, Chris, I haven't. But if anyone has, in the Facebook comments, go help Chris out with that one. Uh, lots of you talking about preparing your uh, headphones, protecting your ears, sorry. Uh, no, I was distracted then because Patrick says, I like those headphone cushions. Where can I get those? Well, look, come on, people, be honest. I pimped these up because I love the colours of Digital DJ Tips and I wanted some headphones to match them. So I pimped these up. These are the new Pioneer uh, HDJ Q1 headphones, which is about $70. They're really good, actually. I really recommend these as a, a budget headphone. But they have, I'll show you, these packs available, which you can get for like another $30 or something. And it'll give you a different colour cable and a pair of these and they've got them in all kinds of colors but obviously i got onto pioneer and said hey 
I'll happily review them for you, but send me some of those packs so I can pimp them up, and they kindly did. So it's Pioneer's new headphones with the addition of the packs, which you wrote about it on the website recently, so you go find it there if you want to uh, if you want to have a peep at it and see uh, uh, and see the down uh, running out of words. It's been a long day. Uh, see all the details of it; they're all over there. I use Serato Play with a native instrument split Q cable. I've been using this for years and it works great, says Raoul. That's a really good tip. I love it. Uh, I remember that cable from years ago. Uh, what headphones do you recommend? Well, there you go. I've given you one recommendation. Um, your pool party was amazing, says uh, J James Salter. Uh, we did a, a live stream yesterday from my pool. Thank you for that. Um, and just one or two more. Uh, I'm just looking for something a little bit different on this subject. And I can't see anything other than the late at night. Look after your hearing. And this is really important. Uh, yeah, Angela, this is really important. All DJs are going live at home and this might save you trouble from your neighbours. It is very true. Uh, P4 Boot says, if you're using headphones as monitors in a club, do take out the cans to hear and the EQs and EQ the sound in the, in the mains. Sometimes the sound on the headphones doesn't translate to the same sound in the loudspeakers. Yeah, sure, it's a good idea to take them off and check the club sounds all right. You know, if you've got an audio engineer, great. Uh, Luke has an audio engineer, of course, but not everyone's that lucky. Uh, and the final comment, uh, Mark is helping out with the tractor problem. Uh, so that's good. Thank you for that, Mark. Um, and final comment from Scott, I DJ out with closed back isolating headphones like Sennheiser's. This allows lower volume in your headphones as you're not fighting the PA and removes the issue with poor room acoustics, sound bleed from other rooms and, uh, and over loud monitors. Uh, thank you for that. You should always DJ out with closed back headphones, of course. These closed back means this is solid. Now, producer headphones, that's quite often open because it's just nicer, keeps your ear cooler um, and uh, all that kind of thing. But for DJing, one of the things that good DJ headphones should have is isolation. And isolation means it isolates you from the outside world. So even if you put them on with no music on, it sounds a lot quieter. And as Scott rightly says there, it means you don't have to have the volume as loud to hear properly, which is gonna be good for your ears. Uh, and Alex says, the first solution is great. I will try this out on my next session, Phil. Uh, lots of you asking questions about this. Do scan down in the comments, wherever you are, Facebook, YouTube. Hello, our Mixcloud people, by the way. Um, hello to Sinister Minister on Mixcloud who says, what's up, Phil? I always mix with headphones as I'm mostly deaf in my left ear. Well, there you go. And DJ LV2D, I use it all the time, sometimes with split cue. Uh, so uh, yeah, the new Pioneer headphones are really good. They're really good for the money. Lots of you asking about that down there in the comments. Uh, I was really impressed with them. I mean, they're not as well built as the, the, the top headphones. Uh, and you know, I've got the other ones here, the kind of next ones up. I'm just looking for them now. I saw them earlier. Maybe they're under the uh, under the desk here. Yeah, here they are. So these are the the next model up. So they're not quite as substantial or quite as well built, but they do use the same drivers, so you're getting the same sound quality out of them. Uh, yeah, they're really nice. We're gonna we're gonna have a review on the website, but I used them for the live stream at the weekend. I really liked them. Uh, so right, we're done, folks. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on our Tuesday Tips Live today. Remember, Thursday, live Q&A for any questions that were not about this topic. Uh, Sunday at 5 p.m. London, midday Eastern. Join Steve Canueto for a In My House live stream. And on Monday, because it's a public holiday here in Europe, most of Europe, on Monday, we have got a special classics live stream. I'm going to dig out my classic music from years gone by and do an old school, back to the old school live stream, which I'm really looking forward to. So again, that's going to be 5 p.m. London, midday Eastern on Sunday. Uh, and finally, we have a YouTube premiere da -da, on Thursday of our a, a whole lesson from our House Mixing Mastery course. So head over to youtube.com uh, slash digital DJ tips and click to sign up for that premiere. Add your name to it to be reminded when we go live. It's going to be uh, on Thursday, some point Thursday afternoon, uh, and you get to watch a whole free lesson from that course where Steve teaches you a loop roll acapella blend. It's really cool and we give you everything you need to go away and do it. So whether or not you end up buying the course, you get a really valuable lesson on a really cool trick uh, when blending house music with acapellas. So that's a YouTube premiere on Thursday. Go there now or very soon and you'll be able to sign up for that. 
so thank you very much for joining us, people. Uh, and I'll see you on one of those. Meanwhile, get good, stay safe, make the moments, and we'll see you again very soon.